this afternoon, uh, we're going to be building uh, on the model that we started this morning, this uh, network-based model uh, SEIRS, susceptible, exposed, or latent, infected, infective, I should say, recovered, and uh, people going back to susceptible. Um, and we're going to use that as a vehicle for exploring some concepts in agent-based modeling concepts involving uh, targeted interventions, um, uh, interventions that can be informed by uh, a person's uh, uh, broad categories in the population, but even by their history. Um, we'll also be using this model as a tool for examining this interaction between emergent behavior and associations as they emerge from this model, recognizing that associations are, are produced by a data generating process. We'll further use it to deepen our understanding of the role of events in uh, supporting reporting. That's gonna be the first part of the afternoon. And uh, hopefully you will have some eye-opening moments. The later part of the afternoon, we will devote again for incubator projects. And we're going to bring the teams together once again to um, to really substantially advance those projects, um, uh, which we really learned about and 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 uh, uh, understand uh, team members' uh, background and interests yesterday. Um, so that's the plan for this afternoon. Now um, to pursue this, uh, we have a, a set of needs and I'd like to uh, to go uh, and uh, start to to work on extensions to the modeling. Um, so let's turn to that right now. The first thing I'd like to do is to go back and uh, thank you. yes, I'm sharing here. Um, we're going to go back to any logic. Now, I've posted this model. If anyone is feeling lost or if anyone is feeling like they need to find a new model, um, uh, it's up there as version three on the, the site. Um, it's the it's labeled slightly as a misnomer, uh, SIRS network model version three. Uh, I am hoping that Wade could take a look at sob small sometime um, as, as it emerges. It looked like uh, he had mentioned that uh, there was some issue with infection spread, and it may be as simple as a fix C just leading to no infection spread every time. But uh, if that's something which could be looked at, wait, I'd appreciate it. Okay, so this is the model we built from this morning, and it provides an excellent and uh, quite thought provoking foundation we're building on for some of these concepts, targeted interventions, things like the emergence of associations from the data generating process generated by the model and reporting processes, et cetera. So, so let's get going on this. Um, so uh, the first thing I wanna do is I want to just for, for uh, to make some of these points clearer um, and to, to lend the model some additional behavior. I'd like to go to uh, to the main scenario, the baseline scenario, um, the reference scenario. And I wanna note that right now, it uses the default values of all parameters. That's why none of these are, are made in, um, in, in bold. And you notice the connection distance threshold was set by default to 50. And it, it's okay, but it's a little bit of a threadbare network right now, so to speak, particularly for medium and high income individuals. There's um, uh, a lot of different components of the network. People aren't fully uh, connected. Um, the connections extend about uh, yay far, and after that, it's pretty much disconnected components. So I, I wanna remedy that. now. Normally, I'd, I'd remedy it by changing the baseline. But as I said, as a best practice, I often like to make the baseline B 
be consistent with the default values for parameters. This is not a requirement in any way, but it's kind of a best practice because it means that if you create new scenarios, they'll use the default and they'll have the same value by default as the baseline. When new scenarios are created, they use the default values of parameters. So if the default values are aligned, they're the same as the baseline assumptions, then every time you create a new scenario, it starts with baseline assumptions for parameters. You can just change the ones you have to you want to change. Otherwise, you you know, if you create a new scenario, it's not aligned with the baseline, you have to remember to change it. So specifically, I, I want to change the connection this uh, distance threshold, the default value, which I'll use for the baseline. This one here, connection distance threshold to 100. And so we're going from 50 to 100. Can anyone say, just in terms of sort of qualitative results, if we extend that threshold, the threshold within which, distance threshold within which, if two people lie within that distance, they'll be connected. And otherwise, they won't be connected. Do people lie within the system threshold? A given two given agents, agent X, agent Y, if they lie, if they're within that distance of each other, distance given by connection distance threshold, say a hundred, then then they'll be connected. Otherwise, they won't be connected. That's the rule with the distance based network. So if I change it from fifty to a hundred, what would I expect to see for the network? Anyone? But what, what would so more connections? Would it lead the network to be more connected in terms of components or less connected? More connected. The, these islands that were there before will be knitted together, right? So let's try that. Let's let's make that our default now, 100. And that means any new scenarios are going to be using that as the default, which is going to be our baseline. And, and let, let's go just see what that network looks like. Um, so here we are. And the network is being calculated, and you'll notice it's rather more connected. It kind of stretched the the base connected component, but the, the 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 agents that are all connected together here to the left stretch now instead of out to about here or something, they end up stretching out quite some distance to the right. And when I say distance to the right, who am I talking about in terms of income? I'm saying they're stretching out to towards higher income, right? Now, the really high income people are way out to the right further in their own little gated communities and so on. <laughs> but but these ones uh, here are, are connected, kind of, I'd say, maybe middle income and, and low income. Um, so it stretches out quite a bit. Is it? Is it still the case that the, those uh, who are really low income are a lot more crowded than those who are middle income? Is that still the case, even though it's knitted together more? I'd say it is. I mean, it's a lot denser here in terms of connections. Each person here has dozens and dozens, if not more connections, whereas, you know, way out here, um, same connected component, you know, what? Pathogen could travel all along here. There's a path all along here. But these folks over here, you know, might have two connections or might have, you know, seven connections like this one or three connections. They are knitted into the same component, but with fewer connections. Do you see that? Okay. Uh, Wade is his hands up. Well, rightly so. If, if anyone is confused by terms like connected. Well, I'm trying to explain th that. I said, like, there's a path from this one to that one. Right. This is how I was referring to it. And I'm I'm trying to, you know, so, so these folks, all these folks are part of the same network. Pathogen could travel from one to the other because there's one or more paths from any of these to, to any of these. They're in the same bunch of the network where, you, you could go from one to the other along the path. By contrast, this folk, this person out, this group out here, kind of like Prince Edward Island up there, is is without the Confederation Bridge, is 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 out here as a as an island, right? Um, 
this person's in an island. Uh, these folks are in a component with together, but they're not in the same component as this one here. Are we okay with that? Okay, so that's that's just a little bit of a assumption change to to give us a more kind of richer network that's more fully connected. Um, thank you very much. Um, okay, now having having done that, let's start to build up some additional out, outputs from this model. And I'd like you to pay attention to these next two. They illustrate some connection, some um, principles uh, in terms of conveying information from a model, including from a running model that uh, can teach some lessons. Okay. Um, so, I'd like you to, to do something we've not done before. We've had, do you remember yesterday we had some variables at the level of the whole model, which kept track of like the count of deaths? Anyone remember that? Count of deaths? Or the, the count of individuals who had heart disease thus far, who had developed heart disease. Remember that? Okay. Um, those were overall statistic they're reported quantities that summarize the state of the model mm -hmm. and some of them were about the history of the model it's like what's the cumulative number of deaths that have occurred thus far it was a tally and each time there was a new death we reported it do you remember that and there were some deaths we, we had to record along those transitions into the final state if someone died Without with a healthy heart or with heart disease, do you remember that? So these were these were summaries of the history of the model. We're going to put in some summaries of the history of the person. Person's histories, person's biographies are important. Person's stories are important. Convert it from wave, and and we can with an age based model we can speak to said stories. We can speak to lived experience of people um, in 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 ways that. They're analogous to their biography. So let's go do this. So um, I'm going to save this model as, as just getting ready to save it at, or getting ready to add to it. I'm going to call it version four so I don't mix it up. Um, and next, and so what I'm going to do is we're going to keep track for each person of how many times they've been in for that person, we're going to keep a running tally of how many times they've been infected. What sort of thing, what sort of construct, what sort of element would I use in a model to keep track of something that's changing? A variable, right? Keeping track of something that varies. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we're going to go add to the model a variable. Mm -hmm. Now, where does this variable live? Real me that. In person. Why in person? Why not in name? It's changing at a person level. My count of times I've been infected with chlamydia might be different from someone else's. I don't want to pick another name here. Um, number of times they've been infected with chlamydia. So we, um, uh, we're going to keep track of it at a, at a personal level. Personal help. Um, okay, so so ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna go to person and we're gonna add to that person a what? A variable. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go to palette and we're for person, and we're gonna add a variable and it's going to be called count times infected. Okay. Now, what's type of variable? What's type of information will it hold? Can anyone say? What type of information would it hold? Would it hold a, a Boolean true or false or a double, a fractional quantity or a, an integer because it's a count, count. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and its initial value will be zero. We commonly start counting from the time of the model. 
I'll come back to them. Because initially, um, its its value might be really unnecessary, you know, unusually small. So over time, as people maybe age and die, et cetera, we'll start to get a representative value on average for the population. At first, everyone's going to be zero. Okay, um, count times infected. Okay, now, so that's the count times infected. By the way, I'm going to teach you a trick. Can I teach, teach you a trick? Okay, so if you double click on person, it will show a full screen of that, okay? If you double click on one of these tabs, it'll toggle back and forth between a full screen view and a regular view. So if you just ever want to kind of zoom into a window, double click on the tab and you'll see, get to use it for the full screen. You see that? Okay. So where would we change and what mechanism in the model? What particular pathway? What particular place in this model? What point of action in the model? What causative step using different synonyms for it? We yeah, it blinked. Um, so uh, where where would that variable change that we need to increment? We increase that tally of the count of times they've been infected. Where would that be? Well, it's the count of times infected. So recover is not a bad idea, but we're actually going to keep track of it when they get infected. Where would that be here? What's the mechanism in the small that simulates infection? Yeah, this this infection transition. So how are we going to increase that value of that variable? Do you remember the way to say increase it by one? We say its name, and then we, we put a funny two symbol there. Plus, plus. Sorry, sorry, here we go. Said what? Plus plus is right. That's right. That's right. And if you ever heard of the programming language C plus plus, you'll get the 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 joke involved in that. It's like one better than C. Um, so if you ever wonder where that name came from, it's from from this. Um, count times infected plus plus. Do we need a semicolon? Yes. Yes, because we're saying what? Do it. Do it or do it. It's a command. We're saying make it happen. Okay. Contents infected. Are we okay with that? Okay. That's great. By the way, we we did it here, but we could have done it here when we entered the latent state. We could have alternatively done it at this age this entry action for the state. And that would be have some robustness because if we had several routes of entry into it, we we could in one place do have one place where it increments instead of having to do it for every transition. So we have some choices about where to put that logic. We happen to put it here. Incidentally, we're also going to be missing the folks who start infective. Um, uh, because it's like they they start infected, and so we're not going to record the count of time as part of the count of times infected. Um, <clears throat> so we have to be aware of this. If we wanted to count them, then what we could do is put this as well on this this um, and on this transition, and we would put it in the action here of this transition. Maybe we'll count that as them getting infected too. So if they come in this way at the very start of the model, this these are people who start out infected for economists. Well, we'll record they've had one count of times infected. If they come in this way, they'll also have it. You have to think a little bit, where does it need to be increased? And sometimes it's helpful to put in the entry action of a state. Are we okay with this? Okay. Are people okay with what this means? This just means, hey, it's a, it's a crisp, first way of saying 
take whatever value is in that variable, count times infected, and make it one larger. Increment it by one. Make it one bigger. It's like tally it one more. One more, one more, one more, one more. One more. It's like nicking it off of the tally. Okay. Are we okay with this? Okay. Now, if we run this, we'll see this in action, although it won't be immediately obvious from first glance. So make sure it builds and that it's a happy camper. It built. Okay, who needs help? TAs, stalwart, you are um, deploy with alacrity if, if, if there's need. Okay. 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 I'd like you to run this model. Deploy with swiftness and alacrity. Um, okay. So here we go. And the infection is beginning. Okay. Now I'd like you to open the developer panel and let's go browse people in the population. Here's person zero. The count of times they've been infected is how many? In my model, it's three. You could see them going through their states. They've been infected three times. I'm doing it with another person now. And they've been infected five times. I've been doing it with another person. They've been infected three times as well. Okay, next person. They've been infected six times. So that's all well and good, but it's it's inconvenient. We have to kind of drill down to each person. Let's summarize this information anyway. Let's summarize this information across the model. Reflecting the fact, being true to the fact that it's information about a person, but showing it on uh, a, a, a graph that communicates it. And what I'd like to propose with your leave is a histogram. May we use this? Hearing no raging objections, I will proceed. Okay? So what I'd like to do is introduce to you how to create a dynamic histogram that's going to show the state of this model over time in a way that reflects this heterogeneity and count of times infected. Are we okay with that? Okay, so let's let's go pursue this. Okay. So what I'd like to do is now uh, go and uh, we're going to put in place, we could do this in a couple of ways, right? Um, okay. Um, so we're going to add statistics that will count the cumulative number of infections uh, among high SES individuals, um, and uh, no, actually, I think I think I'm going to uh, do a histogram instead. Um, well, no, we'll do both. We'll do both. Okay. So the first thing we'll do, we'll start with the population, and I want to put in place a statistic that will report at any one time the cumulative number of infections that have occurred across the entire population thus far, and then one that will do that over for low-income people only, and then the one that will do that for non-low-income people, so medium and high. Um, so uh, you tell me, uh, you're, you're getting good at this, and I mean that. Um, let's go to the statistics. How can I add a statistic that will tell me the cumulative number of times people across the entire population have gotten infected? What would I do? Let, let, let's name it cumulative, uh, I'll call it count cumulative infections, okay? Now, I'm doing this to build a bit of skills and a bit of discernment. What sort of statistic is it? What type? Is it a max, a min, an average, a sum, or a common? 
It's tempted to say count, isn't it? Some, some, it's a sum. Um, and what is it, a, of what is it a sum? I, I say it's not, it's not just a count because we can't go through the population any one time and count the number of times. It, it's not like that's their current state, you know, and, and we just go through and count them up. Instead, each person has a variable. Do you remember this? You created it not five minutes then a variable that counts the number of times they've cumulatively been infected. Do you remember that? You just added it to a person. So we want to... I know it sounds like a snake, doesn't it? We want to sum it up across the population. Do you understand that? Do you get that? Each person has their cumulative count for them, and we want to sum it up across the population, get the cumulative count across the population. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's... Let's go do that if we could. Okay, so it's going to be a sum. And of what is it going to be a sum? For, yes, yes. And each person's name, do you remember the little light bulb tells you what to say for each person? It's called item dot. And then whatever that name is, right? Count. It's called count times infected, right? Hey, 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 count times. Okay, it's it's being it's being a bit truculent now. I don't know why it's not completing it. Count. Am I, am I misspelling it? Um, count times and. I don't know why it's being truculent. It looks like we'll have to type it out. Count times infected. Okay. Okay. And let's try building it and make sure it's a happy camper. And it is. There are times where it's autocomplete fails. Okay. The, the, are people comfortable with this? The idea each person has a record of the number of times they've been infected cumulatively. And then to figure out cumulative number that occurred across the entire population, we sum those up. Why can't we simply count count the people? Is it, well, because at, at any one time, it's not like they're um, it's not like we count, oh, they got infected here, 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 here. It, it's 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 an aspect of their history that they're they're storing away. We, we can't just count count, it's not like it's a population of infections and we're counting the number of infections. No, 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 it's a population of people, and each person keeps track of their history of infection. Okay. Okay. So this is the count cumulative infections in the entire population. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we're going to add that, and it's going to be. I want to have count cumulative infections among amongst low income. You can leave out the st if you want. Um, amongst low low income. Uh, and I'm going to tell you, this is going to be a sum as well. It's going to be exactly the same logic. This is this is very much the pattern. You see this again, again, we saw it above. It's the same logic for these as for each other. It's just the condition is different. And what's the condition here? For someone to be, to be deemed worthy of being summed up for low income, they have to be what? Yes, yes, that is, that, that's exactly right. You folks are awesome. Seriously, this is great. This is great. Okay, that's exactly it. Okay. Okay. You folks are seriously thinking like a modeler here in terms of putting this together. And then we're going to have uh, cumulative infections amongst medium and high income. And as we say, mutatis mutandis. Um, it's just the same thing with, with the inessentials updated. So it's going to be the sum in the same way over a count of times affected, and the criteria is going to be what? Speak on as in one voice. Oh, okay, failing that, speak on as in separate voices, if you want. What is, what is the criterion going to be among medium and high income? 
Great, greater than low income threshold. That's exactly right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is this is really quite awesome. Okay. Okay. So can we mm, mm, um great. Uh so I'm going to plot um cumulative infections. So how do I create a plot of those? Can anyone say? Yep, and where where does the plot, whence does the plot come from where? Palette, and where in palette? Analysis and time plot, yeah, 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 you know the shtick, you know the shtick. And it's called plot cumulative infections. This is kind of rehearsing our old, same old, same old, but we're going to get to use the same data in a more creative way in just a moment. And so this is going to be cumulative uh, infections across population. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's its value going to be? At any one time, its value is going to be given by what? Pop, 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 pop. Population, population dot what? Count uh, cumulative infections. Is that okay? Remember, it's the same pattern we saw before. It, we do, it doesn't need any information to do its job. It's self-sufficient. We don't need to give it any information. So it's it's begin per in and per in. If we needed to give it information, we'd pass it in as an argument in here. Um, okay. And now cumulative infections across low income. There we go. Um, low income. This is just confirmatory. And what do we put for this? Anyone? Population dot count cumulative infect infections amongst low income. And one more, when one more for the Gipper. Oh, that was interesting, Wade. I don't know if you saw that. But no, I missed it. Okay, I pressed the button and it sort of just refreshed or something, but it didn't add it. Okay, amongst medium and high income. Okay, okay, and there we go. And we're going to do amongst high income. High income. Okay, does it need, do we need semicolons after these? Do we need semicolons? No. no, because they're just, it's just like a formula in Excel. We, we're not telling it, do this, you know, make this happen. No, 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 we're just commuting about it. It's just a formula. And, and, and where are these formulas? They're the statistics in the population, right? Are we okay with that? Okay, we need a bit more time for this. Yeah, a little bit more time. Great, great, great. Take your time. Any questions I can answer about this while people are catching up? TAs, make sure I see, I see, you know, uh, maybe some people could need, need help. So please, if you could try circulating a bit. Okay. Okay. What would you like me to display? I added three uh, three things to this time plot. Cumulative infections across population, cumulative infections across low income, cumulative infections across medium and high income. Each of them calls off to the corresponding thing in the statistics of the population. So population dot, this thing is the statistics we just created, a statistic we just, do you remember that, creating that statistic? Just a few minutes ago? Remember that? We did like a sum statistic. Remember that? The silence is deafening. Does anyone remember that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. There's a question on the line. Great. Great. What's the question? What was the condition for the cumulative count statistics? Great. Uh, for medium high SES. Wonderful. Okay. Let's go back to the statistics. If anyone missed that? Great. Here we go. And I'm going to double click on this and make this full screen. Look at, look at that. Okay. So here's count cumulative infections. It's 
the count up with no conditions, so no no restrictions of the count of times people have been infected. Remember, this is the variable within each person that kept the count of times they've been infected. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. This is the count of times infected amongst low income. So it's the same thing as this, but we restrict it. The only people who get counted there are those that that pass this criteria, that match this criteria, which is their income has to be less than or equal to the low income threshold. And then count Kim of infections, well, medium and high, it's the same thing we're totaling up, the same sum, but it's amongst only those who are above that income threshold. Are we okay with that? Why was there a condition from the Kim of count statistic for me? Oh, what was the condition? Yeah, it was this one here. It's just, and by the way, that was the same, same basic idea that we used when computing the prevalence. We were computing the prevalence among those who match this criteria, this stipulation. Okay, great question. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, you folks are awesome. This is great. Who needs a bit more time? Would anyone like a bit more time online or, or in the room? Okay, are we okay with this? Okay, um, great. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, let's go and run this model. Let's make sure it builds and is a happy camper. Mine is a happy camper, but maybe maybe you need a TA to help you to be a happy camper. So does anyone need TA support? Okay, let's run this model. We're running it, ladies and gentlemen. We're running it, and here we go. The it's knitting together the network here. Okay, here we have the network, and here we have cumulative infections against across low, medium, and high. Okay, um, here's across the population. Here's across low income, and here's across medium and high income. Okay. Um, Okay. Okay. Um, so the low income uh, individuals, this is cumulative infections over time. And you notice that the infection is still spreading and uh, we are getting a rise in the cumulative number of infections. Okay. Uh, okay. So, um, I think I am going to change because now we've knitted the network together more. The criteria for, right, um, this is 10, yeah. I'm gonna change the um, low income threshold to be a little bit higher, okay? Um, so low income threshold, I'm gonna change to be 400 instead of uh, 100, okay? Um, so this is going to be, uh, be reflecting the fact that not everyone is low income is in the really far, far low income area. So it's gonna be more like 400. Okay, um, so we're going to run it out. And we will see with this uh, what the criteria will be, or rather what, what the um, situation is like in terms of the spread. So 400 is something like maybe half of this area. Um, wait, do you, do you know, is this, um, let's see, each of these is like five, I think. Is that right? 50. 50. Oh, 50. Okay, so this is 100. So this would be 200, 300, 400. So it's like it's like up to here, maybe something like that. Um, yeah. And um, uh, here we have cumulative number across the population and then number among low SES and number among high SES. Okay. So thank you, Wade. So each of these is 50, right? Wade, each of the small squares is 10. Yeah. 
The large ones are 50 here. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, ladies and gentlemen. Um, now let's put into place a histogram. Okay. We're going to use those mechanisms we just put into place, but we're going to put in place a histogram instead of a sort of plain old time plot. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna do something different here, and uh, specifically, we're gonna put in place a histogram that will plot out the um, the number of times people have been infected. I think I will stop this.